you also like those domestic demand oriented stocks that are not so globally sensitive. Tell us where are they? Yeah, you're right. I think in this environment, uh, it makes sense to be sort of much more domestically focused and away from externally focused areas. So that would incl include areas, for example, uh, parts of ASEAN. So we have been sort of overweight ASEAN heading into the year. So we still like uh, Indonesia. We still like Singapore. So those are the markets which are much more defensive to the global beta. I would say heading into the party congress, we also tactically like uh, Asia's which obviously is much more uh, less correlated to the global beta, which is much more sensitive to the policy easing that may take place. And you could also see some support from the national team buying. So I would say China, Asia, parts of ASEAN is something we like. And I think, as you said, on the other front, um, in terms of things that are much more globally sensitive, parts of North Asia, uh, notably Korea, Taiwan, even Hong Kong mm. in there, it's something which you are mo more cautious about. So, you're very interesting that you mentioned the party congress. So, do you expect investing conditions to get better, to get worse ahead after the party congress in China? Um, so... We are not sort of expecting any major changes uh, uh, in terms of whether zero COVID policy or any, any major changes related to property sector. But I would say on the margin, there should be a better implementation of policies post the party Congress once the personal issues are being sorted out. So from that standpoint, I think that will be a positive signal for the markets. So now, when you take a look at the valuation risk, where do you see the vulnerabilities when it comes to Asia in particular, particularly emerging Asia, as we're seeing those outflows from EM ETFs at the moment? Yeah, I, I, I think the, if you sort of look at what's happening in the market, we are clearly seeing an unwind of the summer rally, which, which uh, in our minds was basically a beer market rally. And I think the combination of slowing growth, um, higher rates, as well as kind of stronger dollar would continue to put pressure on uh, regional equities in general, right? And I think within their markets, which are a little bit more expensive on the valuation side, um, notably, for example, India, we do like the longer term growth story there, but valuations are at, at, at extremes there. So that's something where there is more valuation risk. And I would say the, the long duration part of the market, uh, which is not profitable, that could continue to be under pressure because of higher uh, rates, especially with the, with the pickup in the real rates, which tends to put um, pressure on equity valuations. How are you feeling about consumers in this part of the world at the moment? Obviously, if you take a look at the stress when it comes to the lower end of the consumer in the US, does that mean that we see that carry through in, in Asian economies where we are seeing that tightening rate environment as well? Um, yeah, that's right. I mean, in general, we have been a little bit more cautious on the consumer side, uh, partly because of the uh, slowing growth, uh, as you mentioned, which is sort of hurting consumption, partly because of the margin risk, which are still persisting uh, because of the higher inflation. Uh, so I would say in general, the way sectorally we are positioned is uh, somewhat sort of balanced in terms of sort of pockets of value as well as pockets of growth and a bit bit more defensive. So I would say banks is something we still uh, like, given the higher rates environment, we tend tends to benefit banks, uh, which, which tends to be in the value pocket as well. Energy is something we like as well, um, given our views of um, higher oil prices uh, later in the year. And I, I think in the growth uh, bucket, things that are profitable and have derated, uh, some, some parts of internet we like as well. And generally speaking, we have turned a little bit more defensive, and so we have sort of upgraded telcos. Uh, so consumption, we are generally underweight on. Yeah, and how much more is that call evident in economies like Korea or Japan, where we're seeing multi-year lows for their currencies against the US dollar and spending power being eroded? Yeah, I think if you look at the higher frequency data which is coming out, uh, it's very clear, for example, in, in Korea, we are, we are continuing to see export data coming in weaker. The PMI is also coming in weaker as well. And notably, if you look at the export data, you are starting to see, uh, I mean, actually continued slowdown in the in the uh, chip spending uh, or the chip sales in there, right? So it looks like the memory cycle is weak as well, which is sort of flow, flowing through into, in, in, into Korea. So I would say in general, uh, 
th that's the reason for being sort of uh, cautious on the on, on these markets not just the global sensitivity out there but also the fact that the higher frequency data is is slowing and that should lead to further earnings downgrades in these markets what are you seeing in data uh, in terms of data in the likes of india because we had seen so much optimism in that market uh, yeah, I think that's a great question. I think, as I as I mentioned, India is a market where we actually see very strong trended growth over the next three to five years. And if you look at the domestic demand uh, in there, that's that's still fairly resilient. So, from a, from a pure sort of fundamental standpoint, it's a market we like. But unfortunately, I think the mark the, the, the we, are, we are looking at the market which is at very elevated valuations of almost 22 times. And when we look at its relative valuations compared to to, to region, we are trading at record high valuations close to 80 percent um, uh, uh, over mxapj index and when you strip out china even then we are at 70 percent plus uh, valuation premium so it's it's largely sort of valuation risks plus some macro concerns about higher inflation and tightening rbi policy which is keeping us somewhat more neutral on the market but from a more fundamental perspective that's a market we think uh, could have very strong mid-teens earning throws over the next three to five years